Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. Today is going to be a very exciting video. We're going to be covering kind of the first steps of the JBJ uh, 15 gallon QB. Um, so for you guys that have watched my previous updates, obviously I am going to be doing a full progress uh, build video on this JBJ QB. Uh, for you guys that aren't aware, um, my main display tank, my 45 gallon, the one that I have a, quite a few videos on, uh, if you check out my videos, is uh, also made by, made by the same manufacturer and JBJ is a well-known company in the industry. They're not new, uh, been around for a while and they're known to produce uh, great tanks at a great price and um, yeah, you guys can see here, it really speaks for itself. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of the tank uh, in today's video. Uh, the lights are, are controllable to a certain extent. Um, you can control the colors, you can control the intensity, and it's all touchscreen right here. So it's actually very cool. But like I said, today's video is not on the lights themselves or the tank. Uh, it kind of is on the tank, but not really. You're going to see. Today the video is going to be on choosing the rock. Um, obviously the rock is a very important part of the tank because it's what makes the tank look be beautiful. As you can see, the tank just looks really empty right now. Um, you know, it's missing the, the, the main piece. Well, I wouldn't, it's kind of the main pieces, the rock, um, if you do your, your escape a certain way. Uh, most importantly, it's a place for you to put your corals. And uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, so it kind of is very important. So the few things I want to cover um, about rock, and, and, and there's, I've, you know, being in the in the hobby, um, you know, at the time I've been in it, I found that there's kind of a few misconceptions, uh, misunderstandings of rock, and I want to get into those here in this video. So, there's two types of rock you're going to hear about. You're going to hear about live rock, and you're going to hear about dry rock, which is this right here. It's dry, um, and kind of the term doesn't exactly. I mean, it kind of would correlate, but not really. It doesn't mean exactly physically dry, like to the touch. Uh, what they're really talking about, um, live rock has been probably in a tank, or in the ocean, you know, whatever have you. Uh, it's been, you know, submerged in water with proper temperature, and it's pretty much been able to grow organisms, bacteria, obviously bacteria that our tanks need, and that is, that's kind of where the word live comes from. Obviously the rock isn't gonna move, uh, the rock isn't breathing, but there's organisms on it, there's bacteria on it that makes it what we call it live. Um, and obviously we do want this in our tank. So <coughs> the other rock there is, is dry rock. And I'm a big believer of dry rock. If you guys saw my JBJ 45 gallon videos, I started that with dry rock. And um, yeah, so a lot of people, what I've found the misconception is that dry rock will never become live rock like there's just no way to get it there and that's absolutely 100% not true dry rock will become live typically for my tank um, my 45 gallon it took about four months after the fourth the fourth month period everything just skyrocketed you you quickly saw a quick change in the rock and you really saw it come to life which is where the term is uh, live rock so um, yeah, so for you guys, you know, watching this video, you know, if you are new to this this uh, hobby, you're wondering, well, you know, if I get dry rock, I kind of don't want that because I'd rather have live rock and I don't think dry rock will get the real guys. Don't worry, dry rock will end up uh, becoming live rock. It typically takes about six months, give or take. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's one thing I wanted to cover. Uh, on the two differences between uh, live rock and dry rock. So another thing you may be asking yourself, well, why wouldn't I go with live rock? Like it just seems to make more sense than to go with dry rock because dry rock obviously takes time um, to become live. And you know, I'd rather see an instant result right there. Just go buy it, done and done. Well, in a perfect world, yes, that'd be absolutely great. There wouldn't be any problem with it. There's just a too few issues I want to cover with that. One being price. Live rock is typically, well, let me give you an example. <clears throat> dry rock is typically sold for about a dollar to two dollars a pound, which is not bad at all. Um, live rock is sold, I've seen it anywhere from seven dollars to ten dollars a pound. And you may be saying, well, that's not a lot. Well, it's not a lot in this tank, 
but imagine if you're setting up, you know, like a 40 gallon, I mean, even in this tank, let's, the, the, the general rule of thumb is for every gallon of water, this is a 15 gallon tank, you want about a pound of, uh, of rock. So let's, let's make the numbers easy. Let's say you're buying the rock at $10 a pound and you're, you're gonna put 10 pounds in here, that's 100 bucks. Versus if you were to do it at a dollar a pound, it would only be, you know, even $2 a pound, 10, 20 bucks. So the money thing is one thing, you know, it can get pretty expensive. It's not that bad in a tank this small, but that's kind of the, the one problem with dry versus live as far as cost. The main reason myself and a lot of other people out there don't go with live rock is pretty much you okay when a rock is live you can't like buy the rock and say well i don't want these pests in there i don't want that bad bacteria in there i don't want that aptasia in there which if you read videos or or not read videos watch videos or read on the forums that stuff kind of you don't want uh, flatworms. I mean, there's so many types of, there's so many of these pests that you can't choose when you go, you can't go to the LFS and, okay, I want that light rock, but I don't want it to come with this, this, that, or that. It just doesn't work like that. Even, you know, I've even seen rock that looks amazing from the outside, but guess what? There's crevices in there. And I mean, there's no way you're going to see what's in there unless you physically break the rock and get in there. Um, there's just no way you're gonna be able to see that. To top that all off, fish and parasites, you know, they don't get along very well at all. A parasite can be on the rock and you cannot see it. There's, I mean, unless you have a microscope, there's no way you're physically gonna see it. And by you introducing that rock to your system, well, guess what? You just contaminated the whole system. So that's my main reason I do not do live rock. Um, and I'm not saying every time you get live rock, you're gonna become, or you're gonna get these problems, but you run a hazard, you run, you know, it's a possibility. Um, it's not guaranteed, but it is a possibility. Um, but, you know, you talk the price, and then that, you know, the, the pests that can come on there, you put those things together, and for me, in my personal liking, I'd rather do Dry rock, and it's more reward. It's more rewarding. It's you know when when people come over to my house, I'm able to tell them, you know that rock started from pretty much dead, and look at all the life that's on it. Like I got to see it progress. And there's a lot of ways you can what we call seed uh, dry rock. So one of those ways to seed it, there's a great company out there, Algae Barn. Algae Barn sells lots of beneficial bacteria, algae, copal buds, uh, you name it, they have it. So, you know, a good way to, to, to start a tank, especially if you start off with a dry rock, is to seed the tank. Now, I wouldn't seed it with copal pods, you know, the first week you start it up. I'd wait at least two to three months. I mean, you could probably do it sooner. At least give it two months for everything to kind of get going. Then I would go to a company like algaebarn.com and I would order them. I've seen that they have a few starter kits and they actually have them for nano tanks, for like different size tanks. And I'm sure you can email them, give them a call. They'd be more than happy to tell you how much of what you need. Um, so that's a way you can help uh, seeding the tank. And um, so that's that, that's the, the, the few things I want to cover. Now, with this series and this build on the JVJQB, obviously we're trying to do everything on a budget. Uh, so in doing that, we need to figure out ways to save money because my end goal with this whole series of JVJQB videos I have coming along is to get that mindset of people that look from the outside in saying, oh, I don't want to do reefing because it's too expensive. I don't want to do reefing because it's too much maintenance. So I'm going on this journey and I'd love for all you to join me to see if we can set up this tank with as little you know, dollar amount as possible and also as little maintenance as possible. Um, and that's my goal, you know, whether we succeed, whether we fail, I don't know, you know, that's why it's a journey and that's what makes it so interesting for me. And I just want to share the experience with you guys and I want you guys to follow along to see, you know, are we able to do it? Can it be done? Can it not be done? Um, is it feasible, you know? And at the end of the day, if this is something I am able to do, just imagine how many more people will bring in the hobby. Um, so if you are watching this and you are new, I, I, you know, hopefully I've gotten your attention and you're really considering the whole reefing thing, um, especially the way I'm presenting it. So 
That being said, one way you can save money um, with building a tank like this is, from someone like me, I had a previous tank, so people that, that, that order rock, they always tend to order too much. You're better off having too much than too little. So a lot of people sometimes have leftovers. So if you are trying to get into this, um, into this hobby, you know, Instagram, there's also a lot of forums. It doesn't matter where you live. I don't care where you live, the most rural areas, I'm sure there's a local, and by local, you may have to drive an hour in some places, but I'm sure there's like a local forum, a local get together where reefers uh, get together. And I'm sure you can message someone and just ask them for, for dry rock. A lot of the times, this rock just sits in a corner. I know in my garage, this rock that was left over for my 45 was just sitting in a corner of the garage. And if someone would have asked me for it, I probably would have gave it to them for free. I wouldn't have asked for any money. So <laughs> that's one way you could save money. Um, actually, that is kind of the, the way you can save money. So uh, either finding a local friend, someone trying to get you in the hobby, ask them you know, if they got any leftovers, uh, Instagram, Facebook, there's other places, social media you can ask. And then on the forums, look for a local forum. I mean, worst case scenario, you look for a forum, you know, that there's maybe someone that lives, you know, a few states away. I'm sure they can ship it for you, you know, if shipping is reasonable. Um, if they're willing to give you the rock for free, now you gotta pay shipping. I mean, that's a hell of a deal for me. Um, and then lastly, if you do, uh, you do have to buy it. For a tank this big, to do live, uh, to do, sorry, not live rock, to do dry rock, ooh, I just need the light. You, you guys can see me cycle through the colors. I'll put, let me put the brightness up so you guys can have an idea here really quickly on how bright this guy gets. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think it has seven different levels of brightness, so it's actually quite a bit. <coughs> but anyways, let's say worst case scenario, you have to go out and buy the rock. I wouldn't worry too much. You're not gonna spend too much money. Um, for a tank this size, you wanna at least buy 15 pounds of uh, rock at the very least. Um, you'll probably get away with nine pounds, uh, 10 pounds. I mean, even seven realistically, you'll get away with. Um, but generally that's a rule of thumb. And I would either get it from an LFS or get it from Marco's Rocks. Marco's Rocks has it. Uh, Marine Depot, Marine Depot also, also has a very nice selection, of uh, very inexpensive dry rock. So those are the three places, uh, Marine Depot, Marco's Rocks, and uh, lastly, um, <coughs> the LFS. And like I said, you probably won't spend more than, I mean, I'm guessing 40 bucks max and that's like that's a lot um, I don't think you're gonna spend that much and um, also there you're gonna notice there's different types of rock there's I mean I don't even know them all there's Pukani there's uh, Fiji there's like all these different rocks and they're all great and they all have <coughs> their differences now I'm briefly gonna cover the differences um, as, as well as I know them so to my knowledge um, Pukani, Pukani is a lot denser than this rock. So if I had a, a rock of Pukani that was this exact size, it would probably be heavier because uh, it's just more material. There's a lot less crevices in it um, and it's denser. There's other rock out there that's actually, I don't even know that. I don't, I think Fiji, I think Fiji is a lot more denser than even Pukani with even less holes in it. Um, the reason that I go with this rock, not only because it's cheaper, but all these little holes in there, if you're the type of person that likes like frag plugs, you can easily find a place to put them in. I notice corals are easier to place here <coughs> in these little holes. So you, or let, I can, I guess, remove this tape. Um, it's a lot easier to put the corals in these little crevices. Um, and to me, this rock just has more character than if it was, you know, less holy, I guess, if you want to call it, <laughs> less holes in it. Um, but, but like I said, that's just me and that's my preference. And typically the denser the rock is, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, typically the value rock uh, that you find at Marine Depot in Marco's rock, um, the value one is this. It pretty much has a lot of holes in it. And like I said, I don't mind it. I actually love it. I love the look of it. Um, and it's way easier to, to put corals on there. So that's going to be it for today's video guys. The following video I am going to be making is going to be covering sand, um, 
covering the differences of live sand and dry sand. It's similar to, uh, to rock, uh, but you know, kind of not really. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have a video for that. And then the, the following video after, after that is going to be the aquascape. You guys are going to see how I do the aquascape, what's going through my head when I'm doing the aquascape. And hopefully even you experienced guys out there can watch that video and gain something. Maybe if you're looking to rescape your current tank or building a, a, another tank. And uh, hopefully you guys are able to gain something from that. So that's going to be it for today's video. We've gone over 15 minutes so far. I really hope you guys found this video useful. Obviously guys, I am trying to cater this video to a little bit more of the, the, the newer people out there, the people trying to get in the hobby. So if you are that person, please, please, please don't be shy to leave me a comment down below. Ask me any question, you know, there's, I believe there, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, I believe, you know, if you have a question, ask it. I don't believe in stupid questions. And um, I'll do, if I don't know it, I'll do my best to send you, you know, somewhere or research something that maybe uh, can't have the answer uh, for you, but I'll do my best to answer it. <coughs> but yeah, guys, uh, leave a comment down below. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, um, if you like this video, guys, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to this channel, and hopefully I've earned your subscription, please, uh, subscribe to my channel. You know, we got a lot more to come and it's gonna be a very interesting journey and um, Also guys be sure to check me out on Instagram. I'm a very social guy. I'm always on there always posting uh, Eat sleep brief. You're also going to see the link down in the description box below for my Instagram uh, We're actually over 3600 followers. So it's like wow Um so yeah guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and um, that's pretty much, for pretty much it for today. Thanks for watching, happy reefing guys. Oh, we're actually over 3,600 followers. Wow.